Plus A220 versus Embraer E195-E2 A small player turned big versus a failed partnership Here's the complicated story of these in 2004, Bombardier started studying larger single aircraft with the goal to break into the Airbus Boeing duopoly. Their brand new C series would feature new technologies such as composite fuselage and new engines to burn 15% less fuel than existing aircraft at the time. However, the Canadian company had a trick up its sleeve, positioning its C series between smaller, less capable regional jets and larger singlars. The C-Series was launched with high hopes in 2008 and sales picked up at a moderate pace. Other manufacturers felt the pinch, including Embraer, which also started studying their own new clean sheet singular. Airbus felt the technology wasn't right for a new airframe and opted to install the same new engines to create the A320 NEO. Boeing followed suit and Embraer joined in. Re-engineering would be less expensive and Embraer launched their Counter-Strike, the E2 series two years after. Their aircraft would feature completely new wings, avionics, and new raised landing gears to accommodate the larger engines. Bombardier was one of many manufacturers eyeing a share in the single market, only they had the newest aircraft. Ironically though, they would eventually go on to sell the program to Airbus, and the A220 is born. Boeing thus felt the pinch, with the strength A220 gave to Airbus and wanted their own partnership with Embraer to compete. This deal would eventually falter, with Boeing themselves walking away from a deal they initially pursued. So, the final battle is set. The largest E-Jet is now taking on the smallest Airbus. Which is better? Before we find out, if you're new here, a warm welcome and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Starting with performance, an OSA may argue the A220-100 should be compared with the smaller E190-E2. When looking at all figures from Philburn, list price to performance, it's the larger E195-E2 that would make for closer comparison. Just a quick note, the footage of the A220-300 may be used due to lack of footage. E195-E2 carries 120 passengers in a 2-class and 132 passengers in a 1-class layout, closer to A220-100 which carries 115 in 2-class and up to 135 in a dense 1-class layout. That said, the A220-100 does lead the way in range, flying 3,400 nautical miles compared to 2,600 for the E195-E2. Both feature new Prata Winnie geared turbofan engines measuring 73 inches in diameter. A220 has PW1500G producing up to 23,300 pounds of thrust each, while E195-E2 has PW1900G with 23,000 pounds of thrust each. The new engines with higher bypass ratios results in better efficiency numbers.
taking a look at the chart of efficiency over a typical short hop flown, the lighter E195 has the edge over the A220 by 17% per trip and 5% per seat burning 2.17 kg kilograms per kilometer per trip and 2.44 liters per 100 kilometers per seat compared to 2.57 kilograms per kilometer per trip and 2.57 liters per 100 kilometers for every seat flown of the A220-100. This is mainly down to the fact the E195-E2 is the largest member of E-Jet's family and has the most optimized seat costs. While the A220-100 is a shrunken A220-300 with the same wings and engines, resulting in a heavier airframe relative to the number of seats. Still, there is one area where A220 wins out, on the inside. From its larger windows, higher ceilings, curved bins, there are also larger, wider seats of up to 19 inches for the lucky one in the middle, to the quietest cabin and largest loo with a view. None are found on any other aircraft. does have an updated cabin with new welcome features including new cabin furnishings but underneath its dressed up appearance lies a smaller noisier cramped commuter jet with narrower seats of up to 18 inches and a narrower aisle plus smaller toilets. There are some upsides though, such as staggered business class seats for more privacy and new control service buttons. Both feature the latest mood lighting and Wi-Fi, but other than these gas modes, the A220 has by far the superior cabin. Advantages and Disadvantages E195-E2 is the most optimized small regional jet and is significantly cheaper to buy with this price at 60 million compared to 81 million of the A220. Plus, it has lower fill burn thanks to a whole range of new technologies. However, the A220-100 has more range to open up a whole range of new possibilities. With the A220, airlines can fly comfortable aircraft on short domestic hops, but also transatlantic. Yep, this small aircraft can fly New York to London and can land at London City with its steep approach capabilities. A220-100 offers a ton of versatility, but at an additional cost. Should airlines not need this capability, the E2 would save them a lot of money. and the cheaper price seems to appeal to airlines, with A220-100 receiving only 94 orders, while E195-E2 has received 136. So then, which is the better aircraft? Well, it all depends on what the airlines want. For flying commuter jet hops for 1 or 2 hours, the lighter and more optimized E195-E2 is simply more efficient. But for airlines wanting an aircraft that can do it all with a more comfortable cabin and access to support from the world's largest commercial passenger single aisle provider, the A220-100 may cost more, but for them, it may well be worth it. <laughs>